And guess what time it is? Did you guess time for a classic 80s fragrance? Yeah, of course he did. You saw the title of the video. Yeah. Hey friends, Ash here. Welcome back to Extra Gen Sense. Hope that you're doing well. We're taking a look today at the Jacques Bogart release, Furio. And even if that's not the correct way to pronounce it, that is 100,000% how I will always pronounce this fragrance because Furio reminds me of Furio from The Sopranos. That's that's literally the only reason. Furio, Furio. There have to be at least some of you out there who are or were Sopranos fans who were all about Furio. So if you were a fan of Furio, you need to hit me in the comments and let me know what is the greatest moment of The Sopranos and or Furio. In the Sopranos. Getting sidetracked, but back to this fragrance here. I bought it from fragrancebuy.ca as part of a haul, and it was a really interesting haul because I bought two very expensive fragrances and then this one because this one has had my eye for a long time, but I never pulled the trigger. And then when I was buying um, Mystery Tobacco from Carolina Herrera and then the new Parfums de Marley, I was like, you know what? I'm buying this too. So in today's video, I'm going to show you guys the presentation, break it down a little bit for you, let you know if it's worth picking up and all that good stuff. So let's jump into it. So like I said, guys, I bought this one from fragrancebuy.ca. I'll link it in the description in case you wanna check it out. And what really caught my eye was the price, frankly. Uh, it was going for right at about $27 US, a little bit above, but that's because of the whole Canadian dollars to US dollars thing, it fluctuates. So sometimes it's a little more, sometimes a little less, but right around $27 US. And it had been on eBay for like double that, which is still not a crazy huge amount of money, but when you got a fragrance, a classic fragrance that's going for, you know, $55 and up, sometimes up to $70, and you got a bottle for 27 available, yeah, I'll take it. So let's go ahead and check out the presentation on this one really quickly. Here's the box, very classic in design. You have the name of the house, name of the fragrance, size and concentration on the front there. It definitely looks its age, right? It looks like the box of an old school fragrance. They just have a certain je ne sais quoi to them. Nothing up top, nothing on the sides. On the back, you have the ingredient information and you'll also find your batch code there. So the batch code is 8D1581574, pretty long. And then on the bottom, you have your barcode. And here is the bottle. I actually think it looks pretty sweet. I know a lot of people are gonna think it looks terrible or you know, overly dated, cheesy, whatever, but I really like it. I like that ruby red coloration. You got the name of the house, name of the fragrance, size and concentration on the front there. That little Bogart logo on the atomizer up top. And uh, there's nothing on the bottom of this bottle. It just says made in France. Your badge code is etched into the glass on the back of the bottle toward the bottom and the atomizer built into the top. You know what time it is. Time to waste a spray or two. It's not too bad. I've seen better, but I've seen worse. That's what she said. So in case for some reason, you somehow made it this far into the video, reading the title and, and hearing me speak so far, and you don't realize that this is absolutely an old school style of fragrance. In case you've somehow made it this far, and you don't realize that, I wanna go ahead and, and further drive that point home now. This is an old school, by today's standards, smelling classically masculine fragrance. So there we go. That means that if you don't appreciate fragrances of this ilk, fragrances like Koros from Yves Saint Laurent, Antaeus by Chanel, Lapidus Pour Homme by Ted Lapidus, uh, Balenciaga Pour Homme. If you don't like fragrances of that style, then you will probably not like this one. I would say 99% is my certainty that you will not like it if you don't like those fragrances, okay? With that out of the way, let's talk about the fragrance. So I'm assuming that most of you guys that have followed me over to the Extra Gen Sense channel know that I have a bit of a soft spot in my heart for uh, fragrances like this. Old school men's fragrances, specifically from the 80s and before, I really dig them. Do I maybe wear them all the time? No, no. On occasion, yes. But I have this, this soft spot, this love for them, even if I don't wear them with regularity. So how does this bad boy open? How does it smell? Well, when you first spray this one on, you get hit with a wallop of musk. I mean, just like a cloud of musk that comes out of this thing. And it definitely has that 
that 80s feel to it. If you know, you know. It almost feels like when you catch a big whiff of it, especially in the opening, that you can physically feel the uh, the cloud of fragrance, that muskiness kind of travel up your nose and then down your air passageway into your lungs. Like you can feel it as it makes its way down. Kind of like when you swallow something incorrectly and you can feel it just hurting all the way down. Like you can feel it traveling down your body. It's almost like that with this when you smell it. And I realize that actually sounds really bad when I describe it that way but I don't mean it in a negative way at least as much as you can say something like that and not mean it negatively but this is not your clean white musk that you'll find in the base of like your your gears release of light blue or something like that this musk has an animalic tinge to it is it overly hardcore dirty no but does it have an animalic feel to where it is going to harken back to some of those fragrances like Yves Saint Laurent Coros? Yeah. But this animalic feel is almost like a, a slightly leathery undertone to the musk instead of being like an out and out, uh, as some people would say, pea smell. It doesn't come across hardcore like that anyway. Maybe tinges of it from like a civet castorium kind of mix going on, sure, but hardcore pea, <laughs> no. Yeah, we, we, we're we talking 80s pea fragrances here. What, what, what am I doing? But that is something that's worth bringing up because depending on what fragrance you're talking about and how animalic it goes, sometimes they can come across like dirty, dirty. This one doesn't go like hardcore dirty. A little bit around the edges, absolutely, but not hardcore funk. Got some old school lavender in here that helps balance things out a little bit, you know, keeps it from going too far down the dark side. Get that little bit of freshness trying to rein it in ever so slightly so it's a nice mixture a little bit dirty a little bit animalic but at the same time a little clean a little fresh you get little bits of green as the fragrance dries down around the edges some earthiness some earthy undertones as well but i'll tell you the absolute best part of this fragrance is the dry down the dry down of this stuff is awesome like I legitimately really, really like the dry down of the fragrance. It's much different from the opening. Like I said, a big musky bomb in the opening with some animalic uh, features, some animalic nuances, that bit of lavender, all that stuff I already talked about. But as it dries down, it gets a lot sweeter. Now, let me clarify here. When I say it gets a lot sweeter, the type of sweetness that I'm talking about is not gonna be your current modern day sweetness, like what people think of as sweetness nowadays, right? You get overloaded with sweetness in modern men's fragrances, and some of them smell awesome. That's not a shot at all. It's just a completely different way at approaching sweetness in a masculine scent. So this one has a very nice, but kind of subdued ambery warmth and sweetness as the fragrance dries. It's almost like a tinge of honey, like a, a slight little bit of honey that starts to kind of creep along all the other notes here. Just ever so slightly putting a thin sheen of like this sweet ambery honey over the other notes that still remain once you hit the dry down. So the musk is still gonna be there, but honestly, most of that animalic tinge dries away, it fades away by the time the fragrance does hit the dry down. And it smells almost night and day. Like the difference from the opening into the mid into the dry down is completely different. So you could legitimately take this fragrance, spray it on, let it dry down after a number of hours, spray it on fresh over here and go up to people and have them smell each one. They won't be able to tell it's the same fragrance. The first time I opened this up, I sprayed it on a tester strip because I was already wearing fragrances when this came in. And on a strip as well, after it's been on there for a little while, that sweetness really starts to come out and it kind of makes this, for me anyway, stand out a little bit further from some of the other fragrances of this style. Maybe it doesn't get talked about as much as the big heavy hitters, the ones that everybody knows about, the ones I talked about before, the ones I mentioned before. Maybe this doesn't get spoken about in the same way as those, but this stands on its own so well, once it hits that dry down especially. I know some people are gonna be more about that opening when it does have that more old school feel to it. And I would say to a lot of people, it will smell dated in the opening especially, and then through the mid as well. But once it hits the dry down, it doesn't really smell all that dated to me, honestly. I think a lot of people would actually be surprised once it does hit the dry down, the far dry down, and you let them smell it. I would say a lot of people, like I said, would be surprised that this is a fragrance from the late 80s. Now let's talk uh, performance. Now this is the type of fragrance that when you first spray it on, you're gonna think, oh man, here we are, here we go. A big time 80s beast, gonna fill up a room, choke everyone out, last forever, all that stuff. It 
Doesn't really do that though, not for me anyway. Now this obviously is not a vintage bottle. Actually, I checked the, uh, the badge code. I think it said it was like four years and some change, my bottle. So this is not a bottle from when it was brand new, obviously. So of course, you gotta talk about reformulation, all that stuff. But still, yeah, when you first spray this on, even from this bottle, you would think, oh, monster, monstrosity, choking people out. And in the opening, I'd say it does. In the opening, when that musk is really popping, it is strong. But as it starts to dry down, it does settle in closer to the skin. It's not really a, a beast mode fragrance. It has good projection, but not amazing projection. And longevity wise off skin, again, it's good. It's not amazing, at least with my experience wearing it since I've gotten it in. So I can't complain about it. Again, this is a sub $30 fragrance, a classic fragrance but the performance is not like what you might expect when you hear of an 80s fragrance with animalic notes and blah, 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 blah. Good, but not amazing. So don't go into it thinking it's gonna necessarily fill up the room. It may react off your skin like it does mine, and then you'll have a good performer, but nothing amazing. Season-wise, this is the type of fragrance you wanna wear more in fall and winter time. And I'd say you could wear it daytime or nighttime, assuming that you're comfortable wearing fragrances from this time period. It is gonna work better for guys middle-aged and older, and it's gonna work better for guys like me with a soft spot in their heart for older style scents. Again, younger guys, listen to what I told you. If you don't like this style of fragrance, don't waste your money. Other guys out there, sub 30 bucks, nice pickup. All right, if you've smelled that one, let me know what you think about it in the comments below. Thank you guys for hanging with me here today, and I'll see you again another day with another fragrance video. See you guys later.